Okay, now that we're ready to go, first things first, priorities. Timmy's is on the other side of that building over there. Just gonna roll around to that side and go grab me a coffee so we can start our day. This truck can turn so sharp. The power steering needs to be looked at. I have to let the shop know when I get back. Where is it? Where is it? There's Timmy's. Right there, there. They're remodeling it so it doesn't have a sign on the building here. <laughs> and we're right back into it. I was kind of hoping for better weather today. Huh. It started off nice, right? The day was pretty good in Swan River. We're not even that far away. We've gone not even half an hour down the road, so like not even 30 miles. And it looks like we're gonna be going through snow again. That snow I went through last night between the Paw and Swan River was intense. I haven't driven through a snowstorm like that in a very long time. But it was, like I said, it was fun, I enjoy it. This is what I enjoy doing. I wouldn't wanna do anything else. I don't know if I could do anything else, man. I'd probably go nuts. I'll take a day driving a semi through a truck, uh, driving a semi through a snowstorm over sitting in an office any day. The road isn't slippery right now, if you're wondering. It's been salted. It's got a little bit of snow on it from, from before, but it, it, it's doing really well right now. It's just the weather around here is, uh, looking like it's might change soon but i guess we'll find out hopefully the roads stay like this because the roads are really good right now and the weather's actually above freezing so it's all melting like that barn could use some work. Whew. That's an old one. So like I've been saying on this trip, I haven't been up in this part of the province in so long. It almost feels like a whole different like province altogether, a whole different place. But this is still Manitoba. We're just on the west side.
this truck is so nice to to ride down the highway just floating down the highway but i'm sure you've noticed the the universal light of the volvo has popped up on my dash there a little uh yellow engine every time i'm in a volvo it's got one of those so uh bring that up with the shop when I get back I looked it up and it's uh, it's a sensor faulty sensor so a good thing it don't, won't really affect the truck or the ability to drive or anything like that it just uh, needs to be looked at as soon as possible or whenever they get a chance I'd expect nothing less Remember I, I had that Volvo, uh, it was pretty much just like this one, except it was the higher roof. I was in that for a couple of years. Actually my coworker right now is driving it. Uh, it's a regional truck. It still has problem after problem. <laughs> Man, that truck, that engine light would never turn off. You turn off the engine light, you go six hours down the road, boop, there it is again. I started just assuming that whenever I drive a a truck with a Volvo logo on the steering wheel that it's just gonna come along with an engine light. It's, it's sort of just, you know, standard, standard issue. I mean, a bug hits the windshield and it triggers the engine light. Everything triggers the engine light on these things. Very sensitive trucks. I hope I won't run out of washer fluid. Man, I've been using quite a bit of it today. It's a messy day out here. What's this? This is Valley River. Nice. Look at this, we got valleys in Manitoba. Who knew? We're not all flatland. Bet you weren't expecting that. This guy has been fueling for an exceptionally long amount of time. Why do I have the feeling that he just hung the hose in one of his tanks and then walked inside for lunch? Or supper, whatever time it is now. I haven't seen him around here for like 20 minutes. Oh, the old fuel pump issue. A lot of people don't have a lot of courtesy when it comes to fueling your truck. So I'm just gonna remind everybody, and maybe some of you don't know, uh, you gotta fuel up your truck as quickly as you can without making a mess. And when you're done fueling, move your truck forward out of the pumps so that the guy behind you can fuel. If you wanna park there, that's fine. Make it like a five minute maximum. That's just enough time for you to run inside if you need to grab a receipt or if you wanna grab a coffee or go to the bathroom real quick. It's not enough time to grab food. It's definitely not enough time to have a shower or sit down and eat. If you're parked in front of the pumps, you're just running in, running out. If you wanna go in for any longer than five minutes, go and find a parking spot in the lot. If there's no parking spots in the lot, too bad there's no room for you at the inn. Move along to the next truck stop. Don't hold up the pumps. That's uh, one of the most rude and disrespectful things you can do. Look at this, this guy beside me. Oh, look, there he is. He's back at the pump, okay. Five trucks have gone through the aisle beside me already in the same time that this is taking this one guy to fuel his truck. I don't want to complain. I just want to use this as a teaching moment to uh, be courteous and be respectful out there. All right, we're all trying to do the same job. We're all trying to get to, get to somewhere. We're all running behind. Everybody wants their freight yesterday. Everybody's in a rush. It's not just you. Uh, so just try to remember that, that, uh, you know, if you try to say, well, I'm in a rush, so it's okay. 
No, it's not. We're all in a rush. You still got to respect your fellow drivers out there. And uh, you can do that in a small way by not blocking the pumps. All right. Get your fuel, move forward, run in, get your coffee, run out, beat it. Get out of there or get in a parking spot. So it's been really nice having this truck. I really like having a bed right there. I only got to sleep in there for uh, like my eight hours that I that I have to for Canadian hours of service. But uh, it's nice just knowing it's there. You know, I miss that. I do. But tomorrow we'll be back in my truck, uh, the good old Peterbilt. And I have freight waiting for me up in Arbor. We're gonna go and grab that and bring it back for our highway driver who's gonna take it down south. It's probably going somewhere like Colorado or California or something. Who knows, it could be going anywhere. <laughs> 25 maybe the pumps are really slow okay we're gonna give them the benefit of the doubt innocent until proven guilty maybe these pumps are extremely slow it's my turn to fuel up and if they pump normally and they don't take me 25 minutes to fill up my tanks then i know this guy was just being very rude <laughs> but that's okay that, that's okay we'll live right we'll live we're gonna stay positive use it as a teaching moment okay bud Put it in D. Come on, my friend. Come on, buddy. There's someone right behind you. What's he doing now? Come on, buddy. Mm -hmm. Who's honking? I don't know what this guy's waiting for now. I'm going to back up really carefully and just go into the next fuel island, which is now open. I think this guy has a problem. There might be something wrong with his truck. I'm not sure. We're gonna back up very carefully and slowly here. And go in here. Oh, he can't get out. Oh, because this uh, Pike driver stopped here and blocked everybody in with his two trailers. I see. Okay. Now this guy can't get out. That's why it's taking him so long, because of this guy. All right, see? It's fine. You don't judge too quickly. You never know. This guy's the guy who should not be here. Okay, so we're gonna stick with the lesson of don't block the pumps. Like this guy, he's gone in for five minutes, he'll be right back, I'm sure. But the problem with this whole kerfluffle that just happened here was there was somebody who came and parked in a no parking zone right over there. That happens quite often too, so this is a secondary lesson. Don't be lazy. They were too lazy to go and park in a parking spot. So they parked up there. That container's not even supposed to be there, but let's cut them some slack, I guess, because uh, there's snow on the ground. And since there's snow on the ground, uh, it's hard to tell where the light, uh, where the lines are sometimes. Okay, so we'll cut them a little bit of slack, but it's pretty obvious where the driveway is now. And you had a truck parked blocking the driveway there, so that no one can get out and around. They had run in to get a. Well, more than a coffee, because they were in there for quite a while. I'll show you here. The lesson is do not be lazy. They were parked over here so that trucks couldn't get around and couldn't get to the scale, everything like that. And look at how much open parking there is in the back here. Okay, there's a few right in the front row that were open. There's a bunch in this row here, a bunch along the back there, and probably about 50 spots back here that were open. But seeing as that particular uh, team of drivers was too lazy. There was two of them and they were both too lazy to walk from anywhere's back here. They decided to park up there in the driveway and block everybody in and caused a big kerfluffle and got a whole bunch of people upset. That was very rude. That was uh, unprofessional and uncourteous. You know, that, that's not the kind of driver you wanna be out on the road. 
You want to be a driver that can uh, get the respect of other drivers. You don't want to be a super trucker. You don't want to be one of those super truckers that just thinks he's better than all the other drivers. And if you don't walk like him, talk like him, and dress like him, you're not a real trucker. You don't want to be a super trucker like that. They're annoying. <laughs> you got to wear the right boots or you're not a real truck driver. Okay, that doesn't matter. I don't care what kind of footwear you wear. I don't care if you wear shorts. I don't care what you wear. As long as you're courteous and respectful of the other drivers around you and a decent human being, I'm going to respect you, okay? And that's the kind of uh, truckers I want to encourage to be out here with us. So everybody makes mistakes. Let's keep that in mind. Uh, sometimes, you know, we have a bad day and we make a bad judgment call and maybe we park in the wrong spot and we... Uh, don't realize it, but we block everybody in, okay? Maybe you weren't intending to be rude, it just turned out that you uh, were rude. <laughs> it's okay to make mistakes like that. The most important part is, the most important thing is that you learn from it and you don't do it again, right? And that before you do anything, you think of others around you. And you try your best to not inconvenience anybody else around you with whatever you're doing. Okay, because whatever... I'm doing isn't that much or any more important than what the next guy's doing. Okay, we're all we're all out here doing important stuff. And we're all in a rush. Remember that. Everyone, we're all in a rush. There's no rush that's more important than the next rush. Generally speaking, I mean, if there's life or death involved, I understand uh, most of those kind of rushes have sirens and flashy lights involved. If you don't have sirens and flashy lights, okay, your rush is no more important than the next guy's. <laughs> That's also important that you uh, avoid being that super trucker that thinks he's always right and that he knows everything there is to know about trucking. You don't want to be that guy either. There's always something to learn. So if I'm wrong, and if you think that uh, that there's a better way or that you could correct me, leave a comment down below in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. Maybe you can change my mind. I'm open to that. I'm just talking about things from my perspective, what I see as rude and what I see as uh, disrespectful. And we return. That was a nice little overnighter. This is Grand Point right in here. Our yard's just on the other side of town, so we'll go around and in the other side, but that was a nice one. I needed that. Two day run. I got a little bit of a late start yesterday. I mean, it, it should, it's really only a day and a half, but I showed up for work uh, yesterday morning, expecting to, uh, or not expecting to do an overnight. And so I had to take an hour and go home and grab my overnight bag and then come back to the yard and then, you know, get this truck all warmed up, ready to go. And then bo start bobtailing out there. So I, I, I got going like afternoon or something because I was here for a couple of hours in the morning while they were trying to figure out what uh, they wanted me to do. So I think from now on what I'm gonna do, what is this guy doing going so slow? Excuse me, I will go around you then. Oh, he's going really slow. Dude, you should have your four ways on if you're going that slow. Someone's going to run into you. Someone's not going to be paying attention. He's going to run right into the back of him. What was I saying? Yeah, I think from now on, I'm going to keep my overnight stuff, like my bedding, my pillow, and everything I need for, a, for uh, maybe a couple of nights. Just in my pickup truck. That way, the next time that uh, maybe an overnight pops up suddenly, unexpectedly, then you know I can be ready to go. I wanna be that reliable guy that can just do anything, like now. You need me to go there, fine. You need me to take a load to Calgary? Okay, I'm ready to go. Got my stuff, let's go. Just give me a truck. You need me to go to the paw? I'm ready, let's go. Well, it was fun. It was definitely fun. Make sure I take those with me tomorrow. Put all my stuff in here. And there's my truck. Sitting right back over there. Just all plugged in and tucked in. Ready for tomorrow. 
This is nice to have this much space for a while though. I mean, if you came here and drove highway, this is somewhat of the truck that you could expect to be in. They're very spacious. I like them a lot. The little day cab that I drive, it's just a little old city truck. Oops, automatic idle. Automatic idle shut off, I think is what it's called. Whatever, it's okay. 